here with Dr. Arachu Castro, the Samuel Z. Stone Chair of Public Health in Latin America and the Director of Collaborative Group for Health Equity in Latin America at the Tulane School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. She's joining us from her home in New Orleans. Thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. And we're going to talk a little bit about her expertise in anthropology and epidemiology and some really exciting upcoming research that, that she'll be uh, spearheading with Every Woman, Every Child. So as an expert at the cross-section of, of anthropology and epidemiology, what are you most curious and interested in as it relates to COVID-19 right now? Well, I'm interested in understanding the most salient social determinants that are widening health equity gaps, directly due to COVID-19 or to the responses to the pandemic. And the way healthcare is provided is one of so, such social determinants. For example, early on, as part of the response to the pandemic, several essential services have been interrupted or limited. And that is an issue because pregnancy and childbirth occur every day. And to have those services interrupted can reverse the gains that have been achieved in the past few years. And that is very worrisome because those um, suspensions or limitations of health services is going to affect, well, is affecting mostly populations who were already underserved by public services. So I'm talking mostly about people who live in poverty, which are millions of them in Latin America and the Caribbean. With the dual perspective from anthropology and epidemiology, I, need, I see the need to contextualize the social and healthcare conditions the, that help explain the amplification of those health equity gaps. And uh, one thing that is very interesting is that as an anthropologist, I'm always very interested in what is the perspective of the people who are seeking care and all the different hoops that they have to go through to obtain the care that they need. And that is because healthcare is often organized around the needs of healthcare providers, particularly medical doctors. And in context of poverty, that misalignment has great consequences on people's life. And uh, with the epidemiology, I like to understand the magnitude of, of those problems. And that's why I like to to mix the anthropology and the epidemiology to understand really what is happening and what the, what the impact is. Yeah, I think that basically you're talking about there's a lot of issues and inequities that were existing pre-pandemic. They're exacerbated by current containment efforts. And then you also have um, from that anthropological uh, standpoint and then from the epidemiology um, standpoint that you need the the evidence and the data to back up the policy shifts and solutions and um, and realignment of services. I'm wondering if um, if there's anything that surprised you so far in the way that the pandemic is playing out, and if there's anything historically that you've studied or, or looked at um, that you think we can learn from right now. Yes, I'm very worried that with the suspension of some of essential services and the lack of indication to many women as to where they should go for childbirth or, for example, immunization for children, there are countries in Latin America that have suspended immunization. I know that there were some conflicting guidelines about whether the vaccination should be suspended or resumed. The current the recommendation is that immunization should not stop. Uh, I've calculated some of the potential missed opportunities in vaccination for children in Latin America, and we could really go back to where we were uh, around 2000 and 2005. So really a lot of gains could be reversed. I've also estimated the number of maternal deaths that could occur as a response as a, as after the pandemic. So the number of women who could die could double in some of the countries. And the maternal mortality ratio 
could also go back to where we were around 2000, 2005. So it's really worrisome what could happen or what is actually happening. That is why we decided to partner with EWEC and with the Universidad Santiago de Chile and uh, us at Tulane, we are conducting together with the University in Chile um, real-time operational research to try to identify which are the services that are being interrupted, to what extent, and then we will use that information to estimate the impact in 25 countries in the region. So we are, we are there is about 30 of us working on these issues. And the idea is for us to complete the analysis on time to present the findings in early December at a meeting of the partnership in Mexico City uh, to the ministers of health from, of the region. I know every woman, every child is is very thrilled and honored to to be part of um, this really important research and and looks forward to seeing the um, the findings and and having those um, influence really positive policy one way or the other to make sure that uh, more women, children, and adolescents are are getting access to the health care that they need. So thank you so much for leading that. Oh, you're very welcome. I, I hope it is helpful also to bring attention to the need to fund mm, public health systems at a greater level and uh, to reach the 6% of GDP minimum that is recommended. Yep, more research and, and more funding. That's definitely exactly. <laughs> a good recipe. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you. And we'll, we'll be in touch on um, all of the, um, the follow-up and, and the results. Mm-hmm.